Hey, what's up? It's Mark again. Today, I'm gonna work on this old Pioneer reel-to-reel. -reel. Let's see what we can screw up. Uh, this is actually owned by the same guy that owns the Tascam 388 that I fixed. He brought me the 388, I fixed that. He brought me the 488, and I fixed that. And when he picked that up, he dropped this one off and said, see what you can do. And I said, yeah, no problem. I'll get to that real quick. Well, it's been a few months, probably more than a few months, I think. I don't remember what he told me about this. I'm too embarrassed to call and ask him what was wrong with it, but I'm just gonna figure it out. So here we go. Well, that was unsettling. Let me try to get a tape loaded. I don't know how this tape's supposed to be loaded. That's how you can tell you got a good repair man. Does he know how to use the equipment? No? Then he obviously knows how to fix it. I better Google that. I'll be right back. All right, so I was close. I think I got that side right. I just forgot about that. And before somebody says, what kind of idiot doesn't know how to load a tape on the machine he's trying to fix? I guarantee you most repair people have silly questions like that because every piece of gear is a little different and if you're not, if you never worked on a similar one then you're not going to know it's how to use it. Normally people probably edit that out of their videos, but I got nothing to hide. I have a TAC. This is nothing like a TAC. Let's see if it works. Well, that sure seems like a good sign. Alright, that is a terrible sound. Hey, I'm gonna take it apart, deal with that annoying sound, and then go from there and see how the audio goes. All right, it's apart, it's sprayed out, it's vacuumed. Here's the problems I found. Uh, first one, just a small one. Somebody broke an RCA plug in there. Um, obviously, no surprise here, the belts, just totally bad. Um, and you can see how much slack there is. So new belts, gotta get those ordered, being that uh, it's two days till Christmas. Probably not gonna get them till later in the week. Also, by spinning this, I was able to recreate that awful sound. Of course, it's not gonna do it on camera. So I'm hoping I can uh, just take this motor apart and there's hopefully like a felt that needs to be oiled or something. Other than that, nothing obvious. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the primary complaint. Even the lights on the VU meters work and those never work. I'm gonna take it apart, see what I find. Back to time lapse. motor end plate, it actually has not only a bronze bushing, but one that articulates around to compensate for any crookedness. And there is a piece of foam in here that is soaked with oil. So I'm going to try to get this out. It'll probably fall apart on me, so I'll replace it with another piece of foam and re-oil it. Do the same on the back end, and do the same on this motor. Okay, so here's the piece that's supposed to hold the oil. It was oily, but we can do better. All right, good morning. It's the next day. 
I just ordered some belts from vintageelectronics.net, which is where I got the belts for, I think, my Sony cassette deck. You can find them a little cheaper on eBay and Amazon and stuff, but I just feel better ordering them from a electronics place and not just somebody who just got a bunch of crappy old belts somewhere, so. Okay, so I got that motor put back together with new foam inserts. I'm not sure if anybody actually sells replacements for those, but what I usually do is I make them out of some foam that actually came with an air conditioner I installed. Uh, but I use like that style of punch to make usually the inside and outside diameters, as you can see on these. But I don't have them bigger than an inch, and these needed to be a little larger, so the outsides I just cut out with scissors, punched the inside holes with those, end up getting something like that. Although that one's really awful. There, that one's more round. But it doesn't really matter because it just kind of shoved in there, and you know, the last one's lasted 30 years, so I'll be happy if these last till 2050. Ah, but let me show you. I thought possibly that motor shaft was bent. To me, that looks like evidence that it was smashed into something at some point. And I was right. I've got about 15 thousandths run out on that, which isn't great. This side seems fine, so I think just this side got knocked at some point. But just something I didn't expect to come into that I ran into, but I thought I'd share that. Yes, indeed, we do have a problem. That's not a good amount of tolerance, as far as I'm concerned. So I've been messing with this. I said I was going to stop at a thousandth. And I think I'm close enough. I didn't film the process because it wasn't very exciting to watch and it was rather tedious. But what I did was I found the high spot. But you see some sharpie lines on there. Those were my changing high spots. So I'd find the spot that was pointed up the highest. Then just using a 3 8 nut driver. I don't know if all 3 8 nut drivers work or just this one. But the inside was just the right size to slide over. And then I would put a little bit of pressure on the handle and tap it with a little hammer. Very small increments. Slide the indicator back up on there, test it again, repeat, repeat, repeat. Took a while, but I managed to take all but a thousandth of that run out out, and I'm gonna call it good, because of course when I'm hammering on this, I'm putting pressure on some cast aluminum, trying to bend steel, so I really don't wanna crack this motor housing. But I was careful, I snuck up on it, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, that is that, back to the grind. Hey everyone, I'm back. It's been a few days, I already got my belts. Every time I put up one of these videos, somebody asks, where'd you get the belts? Here's where I got the belts. I'll put a link in the description. And here they are. You can see the difference, new to old. Stretched out quite a bit. Uh, the one for the counter is a little less pronounced, but same thing, it's loose. So I'm gonna put those on. Um, but first, I wanna show you how I get this last motor apart. I've already done that one and that one, just to replace the foam and oil them up. So let's get to it. All right, you, as you saw in the time lapse, when I took this one apart, I ended up pulling the entire motor out and I had to desolder the solenoid wires because they were too short. And I think I got a better way here. Bear with me as I test it out. Oh, and by the way, for the bottom one, I did this one too. It was one, two, three screws. This whole plate comes off and then there's four screws on the top and that takes the motor off, and then there's four screws to take the motor apart. A little tricky to get to. There's a couple of these little bendy wire clips that are holding wires that you'll have to get out of the way just to get enough distance, and I actually had it sitting on a bucket out here because the wires wouldn't bring it down to the bench. Anyway, that aside, Nope, that's gonna be a fail. I was hoping I could take the screws out here. Can't do that. So, I'll show you what I've got on the front. Take off this with the screws around here, and then underneath it is this, which you remove these Allen screws. There's three of them, which is real fun to get in here with an Allen wrench. But then behind that, you'll see, we got one, two, three, four screws, and that takes the motor off. So I'm going to do that. Okay, that's all the wire you're gonna get. Oh, and normally this is the hole where you would oil it, but in this case, it's not going to help because the foam is completely gone. I 
this bottom plate. There we go. Okay, let that hang there. I'm gonna zoom you in and work on this one because it's easier to see. Okay, so here's the way I found to get this clip off. Got a socket, this one happens to be three quarter. I'm sure there's a metric size that'll work too. As long as it's just small enough to just fit inside of those tabs. And then I just stick the Allen wrench down that I used to take the pulleys. And then I can just push and twist, and it's off. And all I'm doing there is just pushing all three tabs down at the same time so these little catches can go under and around those tabs. So now you can see the foam, and this is the best one so far. That tells you anything. And then take a paper towel with some mineral spirits. Just wipe off that bushing. I'm going to take one of my foam pads. There might be a better replacement for these, as I've said before. I don't know. They don't have to look great, because once they're packed in here and stuck down, they look fine. And you take the oil. Someone's going to yell at me, we shouldn't use three-in-one oil. Sorry. That's so all I've got. It's better than nothing. This just goes on the reverse of taking it off. There. And all the Allen wrench does is just grabs an edge to spin, otherwise this just slides. So that's back together. I'm going to repeat that on the other one and put it back together and I'll show you how to pop the belts in. Uh, okay, so we got the old belt and the new belt. You can see the difference in stretching there. And this is really easy to put on. Some of these can be kind of hard, but this one's so easy. I didn't show you how to take the back off, except in time lapse, but if you can't figure that out, you got no business being in here. I think it was like four screws or something and the whole back comes off. Uh, this piece you can manage to just take off one screw and loosen the other, but I'll take the whole plate off just to make it easier to illustrate. Couldn't be much easier. Slip it over that pulley. You slip it over that pulley and you're done. That's all there is to it. And make sure you get it on the right one. It's the farthest pulley that way. If you're in America or other countries, it has 60 hertz. If you got 50 hertz coming into the wall, then you want to be on the pulley towards the back. If you can't remember that, just remember which pulley you took it off of. As for the counter belt, but you do have to take off that piece with the three screws. And all you do is just slip it through this hole up here. I'm not showing that because I don't want to move the camera back and forth, but there's a nice little cutout for it. And it just goes right around there. And if you didn't want to replace that one, all it does is control the counter, so it will work fine without it. But while you're in here, you might as well replace both. All right, here we go. A couple things that I came across. There should be two more of these plastic feet right here and here. They did not come with this. They're probably long gone. All that's left for hardware is one screw that's totally jacked. If I had something, I'd put in there, but it's metric. This is America. We don't have metric screws. You got to really try to get metric screws around here. So I don't have anything for that. I'm just going to leave it, whatever. But let's load it up, see if it works. And again, these three silver screws. This side has two gold ones. Make that one gold one. I do have some M3 screws, if I can find the right length. This did have a homemade spacer behind here, and I think that was just to compensate for that part being bent. Shouldn't be needed anymore, because I took the wobble out. And I love my TAC machine, but these little catches are just brilliant. I love them. Mine has those little rubber stoppers and they dry out and don't hold anymore. I 
think I need that anymore. The sound you were hearing was the tape on the reel. It wasn't anything I did. No more awful sound. All right, I'm pleased with that. So one last thing I want to do, I'm going to clean the heads, clean up this pinch roller. So I use regrip for the pinch roller. This stuff can also work in a pinch. If you've got a belt that isn't quite grabbing, you don't have time to order a new one and you're just in a hurry, this will sometimes get it working again for a short period of time. It's obviously not going to de-stretch a belt, but give it a little bit of grip. Sometimes this is enough to get it to work. This makes for thrilling video. I'm just gonna bring you back when I'm done. Okay, I just wanna show you how that re-grip worked. Again, here's the bottle. So anyway, these are the swabs after cleaning it off. Now look at that pinch roller. It just looks like brand new. It's got really good grip, nice and pliable. I highly recommend it if you're doing this type of stuff. Uh, I also cleaned the heads, and they were pretty dirty too. So I'm going to see if I got the RCA plug long enough to reach to the stereo in the shop. And we're going to try it out. Alright, I've got it plugged in to the garage radio. I don't know what's on this tape. It could be the lost Nixon tapes. I guess we'll find out. I don't know if there's anything on it. This tape is recorded in mono. Uh, two tracks forward, two tracks backward. So right now I've just got it faded all the way to one side, so you're only gonna see one needle moving. That's the way my dad recorded tapes when he was alive, so here we go. The one thing I notice I want to do, which I will probably just do off camera, um, this needs a little bit of oil, I think, because it takes a long time to drop down. That should go a lot more quickly because when it's rewinding, that's what tells it to stop rewinding. And it just keeps going, going, going. So I'm just gonna add a little oil to that and just kind of loosen that up. I assume it's just been sitting for so long, but. All right, we've got some Roy Orbison in the background now. I guess that's about it for this one. Off camera there, I just oiled up that arm right there. And it's real easy, just opened up the back, oiled it. Now it works fine. But one thing I've realized working on this, the last machine I worked on was my TAC, which was pretty high-end machine for the time, whereas this was the lowest model entry-level Pioneer. This was not a great new unit, so there are a lot of corners cut. It's a pretty basic machine, all that considered. It's working fine now. Should be good for another 30 years, so. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask or comment. Uh, just don't be a jerk. Thanks for watching.